Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is day 23 of our 30-day EKG challenge, and we're getting closer to the end. So if you've made it this far, congrats, and uh, I'm excited to keep going. So today we have uh, a good topic of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Um, recall that we've just gone over the last two days worth of videos on monomorphic VTAC, and so this is going to be a uh, concept that we can build upon from there. So first thing I want to do is just break down the word itself polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. So, polymorphic stands for poly, which is multiple, and morphic, which is morphology or shape. So, multiple shapes. So, this is a ventricular tachycardia. So, it's a tachycardia of ventricular origin that has multiple shapes meaning that every single QRS complex is different. So remember that in ventricular rhythms, so these are rhythms that arise from the ventricles, anything that arises from the ventricles, say it arises from here, is going to spread from cell to cell gap junction. It's not taking our Hisperkinji fibers. And so what I want you to notice is that all of our ventricular tachyarrhythmias, because it takes so long to get across the myocardium because we're not taking that highway system that we call the Hisperkinji system, it's going to create a wide QRS rhythm, right? Now, in monomorphic VTAC, we said that one of the main mechanisms of monomorphic VTAC was due to a reentry circuit within the ventricles, right? Because it creates a, a, a monomorphic, a one morphology of a QRS. So we said that in monomorphic VTAC, maybe there was this reentry pathway that was, maybe this was my focus here, uh, my ectopic focus here in uh, yellow. And so we end up getting this reentry pathway within the ventricles that just circles around and around and around, and it creates a monomorphic uh, QRS complex. Every time it, it fires off, we get a rhythm that generates a QRS in the same direction. And so every single time this reentry pathway goes about, we get the same QRS morphology, right? In polymorphic VTAC, obviously this is not going to be exactly the case, there's a few different types of uh, mechanisms that can cause a polymorphic VTAC. And obviously this is only one EKG, so this is only going to be one example, but we'll talk about that here. So the first mechanism is that maybe there are multiple regions of reentry within the ventricle. So say there's a region here of reentry, and then say there's a region here right, of multiple regions of scarring within the ventricular myocardium. And so sometimes you'll get reentry pathways that are just like this, and then they'll also reenter into areas of other scar tissue. And so you get this circuitry of uh, QRS morphologies that reenter in multiple areas and generate a polymorphic rhythm. Polymorphic meaning that the QRS complex is going to be... Um, changing every time, right? So if you notice here, this is just a quick example of a polymorphic VTAC where you see we've got QRS that changes in morphology with every single beat, right? You can see that there's a change in morphology. So this is one of the mechanisms. This is not the actual mechanism that we see here in the CKG. This is a different type of mechanism. So one mechanism, like we said, can be, so number one can be multiple reentry pathways within the ventricles. The other way that we can get this is something that is a very interesting. It's a phenomenon, and it's going to be what, what we have here in this EKG, and it's called, um, it's another form of polymorphic VTAC called torsades. And so torsades can occur with this certain phenomenon. And so this phenomenon is going to be called the R on T phenomenon. Now the R on T phenomenon is a phenomenon that occurs when you have a QRS, which is, that's my R, so you have a QRS complex that occurs on the T wave of the previous beat. So that means that if you have, say, a beat here that Normally we get normal conduction from the AV node 
down my his for Kinji fibers, that's going to create a normal QRS complex, right? So that depolarization creates a QRS complex. It's going to be like this, a nice narrow QRS complex. And that depolarization is going to create that QRS complex. But we know that after depolarization, we have repolarization. And repolarization is the ST segment slash T wave, right? That's our ST segment slash T wave. That's the repolarizing phase. Well, if I get an R wave, meaning if I get a premature ventricular contraction or some type of QRS complex that comes early on the T wave of that beat, imagine what would happen. So if you get a premature ventricular complex that occurs, say, right here on the preceding T wave, and say you get a PVC, and when a PVCs look kind of these wacky beats, so we'll do like this big wacky beat. It's a PVC. If the PVC lands just on the T wave, when the ventricular myocardium has yet to completely repolarize, what's going to happen? Say repolarization is part of the way done. So say red, this is my repolarization here. And before that it completely is able to repolarize, what's going to happen is you get this premature ventricular contraction that occurs and it fires off. And what, what can happen is you can develop a uh, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia as a consequence of that beat because some of the ventricular myocardium has recovered and some of it has not. And so it creates this characteristic polymorphic VTAC that is called torsades. Torsades, kind of it's twisting. It looks like it's twisting about because sometimes the reentry mechanism can almost kind of twist about itself where you see it'll kind of reenter and then it'll, it'll you'll reenter kind of in this in this morphology, and every single time it, it re-enters, it creates a different QRS morphology. And so, that's what we have here. And those are the two mechanisms of ventricular tachycardia. So we've got multiple re-entry pathways, and then you have the R on T phenomenon. Uh, the R on T phenomenon is what we have here, and it's predisposed by a long QT interval, right? If the R on T, well, if my QT interval is prolonged, meaning that I have a QRS complex with a really long QT interval, right? My QT interval is from here to here. The longer the QT interval, the more likely that a, a premature ventricular contraction would land on that previous T wave. And so that's what we have here. And bradyarrhythmias, just like we have here, tend to produce a compensatory widening of that QT interval. So what I want you to notice is when I scan through this rhythm, when I scan through this rhythm, I notice that we've got these two runs of a polymorphic rhythm. There's one there, and there's one here at the end. And if I look really closely, what I'll notice is that I've got this P wave followed by a QRS, and then I have this T wave. But before the T wave returns back to baseline, look what I have. I have this beat, and that's a premature ventricular contraction that occurs before the preceding T wave terminates. So that's the R. This right here is the R that occurs on the T wave. And then notice what happens is we get a polymorphic wide complex rhythm that occurs. Fortunately, in this case, this is a non-sustained, right? See how it terminates here? It terminates here. And then we get another narrow complex beat. So look, we've got another P wave followed by a QRS complex. Then we have a T wave. And before the T wave can get back to its baseline, look, we get a premature ventricular contraction that then causes the initiation of that torsades kind of rhythm. Notice that it's almost uh, predictably getting going from narrow to wide, narrow to wide. Same thing here. Notice here it goes from narrow to wide to narrow to wide. It's kind of this ribbon-like appearance. And that's because in torsades, the reentry pathway is actually due to the fact that some but not all of the myocardium has recovered. And so that's the R on T phenomenon. So I know polymorphic VTAC, it's confusing. There's really two mechanisms that I really want you to focus on. One, multiple reentry pathways, right? So this is when we have multiple areas of scarring within the ventricular myocardium. What patients are going to have this? They're going to be older. 
that are going to be, um, you know, the, the patients that have vascular risk factors, maybe they have diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, right? They're going to have had potentially um, have had multiple areas of scarring within the myocardium due to chronic ischemia uh, or previous myocardial infarctions. On the other hand, the R on T phenomenon, this can also occur in this demographic, but this is a, uh, there's a lot more scenarios that can produce this. Anybody that has a long QT interval is at risk for this occurring. And so really we like to monitor QT intervals for that reason because if they have ventricular ectopic beats in the setting of a long QT, then you can have um, RNT causing a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Ultimately, um, torsades, it's just a, you know, it's a name, right? It's um, they're all treated um, independently. You're all tr you're treating the underlying cause of each um, torsades. You often hear about giving magnesium, but ultimately you want to determine one: what is the um, predisposing condition uh, for both of these arrhythmias, and see if you can reverse it while also just treating the acute phase of the arrhythmia. So, um, I hope this helps. I hope you kind of understand a little bit better about polymorphic VTAC. I don't have a, a ton of great polymorphic VTAC EKGs. So I decided to go with this one, uh, and really the thing I want you to focus on with this EKG is the fact that we've got these narrow complex rhythms that are here that are of supraventricular origin, right? Remember, we have these nice P waves, these QRS complexes that have a long QT interval that then have a premature ventricular contraction that cause an R on T phenomenon leading to a non-sustained polymorphic VTAC. We think of sustained versus non-sustained is going to be sustained versus non-sustained VTAC. Sustained is anywhere greater than or equal to 30 beats. Non-sustained is going to be anywhere between 3 and we'll say 29 beats. So, alrighty, hope that helps. Throw your comments down or your questions down into the comments. If not, we'll see you on tomorrow's video. Have a good day.